Hi there, welcome to this Brooks audio tutorial on dynamic EQ. Now I looked around on YouTube and I found a lot of dynamic EQ videos that are more focused on ducking a certain frequency out of the bass when the kick drum plays. Now that's useful, but it's pretty basic stuff. I'm going to go in depth with an advanced tutorial on how to make this work within a channel uh, to build a traditional dynamic EQ in the proper sense um, and apply this to some vocals to, to mean that we create a much more transparent way of EQing them, which you can apply to any instrument. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in Ableton and we have uh, a couple of clips that are gonna help us to illustrate this concept. Um, hello. 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 Hello, what's the matter? No, I got a nasally voice. So this is the first one. This is our singer with a nasally voice. And this is the second clip we're going to look at. Seven succulent sausages sizzling in the saucepan. It's the sibilant person. So uh, we could use EQ for both of these, uh, I, you know, the, these problems. Um, so bring in a, an EQ, make sure oversampling is turned on, as always. And then we'll just listen to the nasal. Hello, Mr. Nasal. Hello, what's the matter? Have I got a nasally voice? Okay, so we can probably say that, that that area, as we can see in the EQ, the area that is causing a nasal nasaliness is here. Hello, what's the matter? But the problem is, if you, Have I got a nasally voice? if you just pull that out with a normal EQ, then uh, you, you end up risking making the, the whole vocal sound thin. So this is a good reason for uh, uh, using a dynamic EQ on a nasally voice or a nasally or a nasally synth, doesn't matter what it is. It's a synth or a sound, any sound that has a particularly prominent frequency, um, uh, which, is, which, is, which is causing issues at certain points where, whenever that kind of resonance, if you like, is activated in the sound. So the, the sibilant uh, problem is going to be up here. Seven succulent sausages sizzling in the saucepan. And you can hear that, that boosting that 9 kilohertz is, is, is making that sibilance more pronounced. We could just cut that. Seven succulent sausages sizzling in the saucepan. But then, the, then the, 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 the sounds that are not S's are then sounding more dull. So this is, how we, this is why we need our dynamic EQ. Now... In order for us to understand um, what we're doing here, first of all, it's worth looking at a circuit diagram. So here we've got our input going in into our EQ, and that's just the audio that's playing, whether that's a live input or a channel that's recorded, like in the case of Ableton. Um, then that goes into our EQ. Uh, we've got a certain cut which we've made, and we've turned the gain down um, in order to either cut the nasalness or the sibilance, whatever it is. Okay, so that's a more of a traditional EQ, but then we add this, what we call the key. So sometimes this is referred to as the side chain. The key is a very good way to think of it because it's like, like the door. The door can open on its own in a way, it can open and close, but then you can also use an external device, which is a key to open and close your door. So you can use that um, to, to allow you to, you to, to move that, that door. I guess that's a good analogy for it and that's possibly why it's called key. Anyway, uh, the key input um, is in this case is filtered. So we're just filtering that to um, the specific frequency that we're worried about on our EQ. And these two can be linked. So these frequencies can be linked. The, the, uh, the, the frequency that we're going to cut or, uh, or indeed boost if you want to boost, but mostly in, the, in this case we're cutting um, and the frequency that the, 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 the band pass, if you like, this is we're going to do this with a band pass filter, um, uh, are linked. So it's the same frequency. The band pass goes through an, uh, an, an envelope follower and that gets uh, sent to the gain control. So every time this frequency plays, the envelope follower is going to track it and then it's going to turn the gain down. And then back up again when that frequency disappears, right? So this is how we're going to create our dynamic EQ. So with our uh, nasally voice, now we're back on our nasally voice, we know that we've cut 153 hertz and that's the nasaliness of this. So in order to build this, I'm going to uh, group, create a group which has got this EQ in, and then I'm going to expand the chains view here 
by using the show high chain list. Um, this is going to be my EQ, so I'm going to label that by using command R or control R if you're on a PC. That's going to be the EQ chain. Now the other chain is going to be the key chain. So here we go, key chain. Uh, and this is going to have uh, a couple of devices in it. First of all, we're going to use a filter. So I'm going to put an auto filter in there and I'm going to band past that. Okay, so something like this, okay. Um, you could do this with an EQ as well, but it would require two bands. So a filter seems to make more sense. We're also going to, from our Max devices, and you can see how I've got mine organized in the collections here, which I recommend having a go at that if you haven't used those already. Um, I've got my envelope follower here, and I'm going to apply that to this. So the filter is filtering what's going on. So let's just listen to the key for now. Hello, what's the Okay, so you can see that that's, that's what's coming in and that's what's being sent to the envelope follower here. Um, so that this, this is following that. So if we then map that envelope follower to the EQ, uh, the gain for our for this band, what we'll see now is... Hello, what's the it's dynamically moving that band when it is experiencing a certain level that comes through this filter. So then of course we need to set this up. So the first thing to do is probably to assign a macro. And what we want is to assign um, this macro, map this macro, map, macro number one. We're gonna map it to the frequency here. So that's going to be mapped to frequency of the filter. It's also going to be mapped to the frequency of this band, band number two uh, here as well. And then up here, we want to make sure that we're looking at the same frequency. So we want to make these ranges the same. It's up to you what range you use. So you could use uh, 30 hertz here and 30 hertz there. And you could limit it at one kilohertz, for example. Um, but then we know that once that macro has been assigned, we can see that where, when we move this around here, we are now at 157 hertz on the frequency for the EQ, and we're also at 157 hertz on the frequency for the bandpass filter going into our key input. Right, great. So, that's, so that becomes, that macro becomes frequency, or we could just say freak. Yeah, um, the next thing to do is to work out how we're gonna um, uh, work, make the uh, envelope follower work. Okay, so it's clear that um, zero to 100 is not what we need. Actually, we need 50% when it's resting and then when there's nothing going on. Um, and we need zero actually when something's happening. So this is when the envelope's at the minimum and this figure is when the envelope's at its maximum. So now we've inverted the values. Now when we look at our EQ again, we should see that this band is, yes, it's flat, okay? And then as we play, okay, so it's moving down every time that band plays, which is great. So. The next thing to do is to work out how can we make that move a bit more pronounced. And I think from experience, I've, I've worked, I've realized that mapping the gain can actually be uh, enough for this. So where we say gain on the envelope follower, um, we can map that here and we can say, we can rename that to be amount. Okay, so that then uh, is frequency and amount. So we have a little look at our EQ again. Let's actually listen to our EQ rather than the chain now. Uh, the keychain. Hello, what's the matter? Have I got a nasally voice? So by increasing the amount, we are now effectively uh, increasing. Hello, what's the matter? Have I got a nasally voice? The amount of reduction that is happening by boosting the gain uh, of the um, envelope. Now you've also got rise and fall, so you can have now you can have an attack and release time for this as well if you want to. So we could map um, rise to macro three and fall to macro four. Okay, and then we could re 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 rename these as attack and release. Okay, so we're now getting to a point where we could actually. Hello, what's the matter? 
We can actually let a little bit of that nasalness through before the EQ starts working and starts reducing. There we go. So we've we've created a, a dynamic EQ um, using just components in, in Ableton. And uh, now the next thing we could do, of course, the, the logical thing we can do is we can copy that across onto our uh, sibilant uh, issue here. We found out that we we, check, we saw that roughly um, nine kilohertz is the, was the problem area here. So it would just be a case of adjusting um, in the map, macro mapping where we want this to be functional. So let's say that actually we want this to work from five kilohertz to uh, 12 kilohertz instead now. So actually now that mapping has changed for the frequency for the EQ band and for the key filter input as well. We can now uh, work on our on our sibilant channel. Seven succulent sausages sizzling in the saucepan. Seven succulent sausages sizzling in the saucepan. Seven succulent sausages sizzling in the overdoing it there of course by add, adding too much amount seven succulent sausages sizzling in the saucepan the other thing which you might like to add is the is the band width as well for that particular band of eq so you could add that to another macro here okay Seven succulent sausages sizzling in the saucepan. And you can have that as wide. Seven succulent sausages or as narrow sizzling as you in want. the saucepan. You can always listen to the band that you're working on by soloing this uh, key chain. Seven and then checking that it's doing the it's working on the right frequency seven succulent sausages sizzling in the saucepan so that's with and this is without seven succulent sausages with seven succulent sausages there you go and just to listen to the nasal one more time so this is with hello what's the matter and this is without hello what's the matter so yes yeah, slightly more subtle Let's try it a bit harder. Hello, what's the matter? Hello, what's Yeah, great. There we go. This method of using audio effects racks with Max for Live uh, devices within Live is so powerful, and this is really scratching the surface of what you can do. But please have a play with macros and understanding that side of things a bit more because there are so many fascinating applications for this. Let us know if you find a new one or something you've been trying to do for a while, and please check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel, and if you're interested in supporting me and what I do, check out my Patreon. Big up. See you next time. Peace.